my name is Jenks. I'm a developer evangelist at Zero. Today, I would like to show you how to get started with our .NET SDK with a sample app that I have built. There will be two parts to this video. In the first part, I'll walk through how the sample app works. In the second part, I'll show you how to build an invoice sync function on top of the existing sample app. Let's get started. Now, this is developer.zero.com. This is the home for all Zero developers. It has the latest documentation of our APIs, the list of SDKs, a previewer so you can play with our API without doing any code, and my apps to manage your apps. Let's go to the SDKs. We're interested in the net standard, uh, which is for C-sharp.net. Uh, we can go to the GitHub repository from this link. It put me in the OS2 branch, but we would like to go to the master. Now the master has uh, latest OS2 code. The SDK is available on nougat.org. By the time I recorded this video, it is up to version 0.4.4. We have built OWASP 2 support to all of our accounting API, which is a majority of our endpoints, and we're building to other APIs as well. To handle the OWASP 2, we have built a separate NuGet package called ZeroNet Standard OWASP 2 Client, and it is on version 0.0.2. This will help you to interface with Zero OWASP 2 very easily. If you would like to know more about it, please read this blog here. You can definitely use your own OWASP controller if you like. We built two separate SDKs just so developers can use their own controller. The sample apps are linked to here. I have made one for .NET Core and another one for .NET Framework. Please ignore the spelling of framework. I'll fix that. It is important to know that this SDK, if you go to the main client, you will see in the CS proj that it is built for .NET Standard 2.0. And by Microsoft documentation, .NET Standard 2.0 targets both .NET Core 2.0 and above, the .NET Framework 4.6.1 and above. So it should work for both if the versions are right. Let's get started. Let's go to the sample app repository. Here's the sample app. You can see that in the readme, I have included a GIF that walks through the application with you, but overall its functionalities include connect and reconnect to zero, storing zero token in a non-encrypted .json file. It refreshes access token if it needs to. It will read organization information from the organization endpoint. It will read context information from context endpoint, and it has the ability to create a new contact. Before we get started, we will need to create zero application so zero knows which app you are. You can follow these instructions here to create one and make sure you set the redirect URL to exactly this. I have already logged in and we'll walk through how to create that. Let's call my app jenks.net demo application. We'll put a local host as our company name, local host as our privacy and the callback URL um, that this that I'm supposed to have for this demo software. Here we go. I have to tick the agreement, of course. The OS2 grant type is authorization code, which is for web application. I'm demonstrating the web application this time. You can have PKCE, uh, which is for mobile and desktop apps. Once I hit create app, Zero Developer Portal will faithfully create an application for me and I'll be able to grab the client ID and secret. For the first time, it won't actually generate a secret. Once I click on this, it will generate a secret for me. I can click these buttons to copy them. You can see that OWASP 2 redirect URI has been set, and you can add another if you want to, but we don't need. Here we go, let's download the code. I usually use the open in desktop, because I'm so used to it, but today I'll do download via zip, which is what most people do. So now that's downloaded and un unzipped. I'll open up with my favorite IDE, which is Visual Studio Code right now. And we can see all of the code here. So here we go. Uh, all of the code, the project is in this zero net standard application. Uh, you should make sure that you have the C Sharp by Microsoft extension. Uh, that's powered by OmniSharp. And this is, I reckon this is best.net. A debugger that I've ever used. It's got a handy IntelliSense feature and a go-to definition which I use heavily during my development. It is a very very good tool to have. Let's go through the code itself. Uh, you can see that I have a few controllers defined. I have a utility. I have a few views defined. Uh, and then this app settings.json 
this has the configuration for my application I'll need to swap out the client ID and secret that I have created so let's do that now before I forget so I'll copy client ID I'll replace it here I'll copy the secret and replace it here you can see that the callback URL is exactly the same as I put into the developer portal uh, the scope is also here there's probably a whole bunch of scope that I don't need but this is for demo purpose so I don't really care uh, the state is your state which is fine uh, state is mainly there for security reasons here we go so that's all set up theoretically if I run this it should work but before we do that I'll walk through on a high level what this application does there is a home controller which is linked to the home view um, in the home view we have an index that displays one button if something is false and it will display another view if something is true now the true and false statement here represents uh, if the zero user have already authorized their zero already uh, if they haven't we'll just connect we'll just display a connect to zero button for them to authorize and it will create that token file that I mentioned earlier if they have already got a token file they just need to refresh it so we'll have a reauthorize zero button a get organization information button so they can get the information a get contact information button and a create a contact button in a home page this will ultimately go to the home controller for logic and uh, on the home controller if we go to the index uh, it will check if uh, if the token file exists the JSON file if it doesn't exist it will return it will keep it false and it will display uh, the view with just the connect to zero button but if the file already exists it will display a different view once zero user click on connect to zero button or reauthorize zero to button you can tell that this view will send people to authorization controller and index function so in the authorization controller we have a authorization endpoint defined and what it does is it will actually build the login URL by using the zero client feature and on the way back when zero call back to your application it will have the code and the state both in the URL encoded um, and uh, we will uh, establish a new client we will use a request zero token async method to exchange the code with a, a access token and store that token with us uh, the uh, we then need to make a call to connections endpoint to get the list of tenants we have tenants equals to organizations in this uh, scenario and uh, we'll store those uh, tenants here in a variable uh, we actually store the first tenant in a f uh, as a first tenant variable it will then store the token and it will display the organization info uh, by using the index controller in the organization controller we can see that there is a, a get information uh, function so it refreshes the token if it needs to uh, by checking the system time against the token expiry time and then it will uh, use get organization async method with access token and zero tenant id uh, it will then uh, put out a response with a list of organizations but where there's only one in that list uh, so it will grab the first one and return the whole organization object back to the view let's take a look at that view right now in the view we can see that uh, we have included a zero net standard uh, model called organization so this view understands the organization model uh, we will we are just putting them into a few paragraphs right so the name organization ID uh, organization entity part type and base currency will display a button for user to go back that's all it does for organization uh, in the context info controller we have a get contacts that will refresh the token and use a get contact async method to get all of the contact of the organization and pass the contacts objects back the contacts objects is actually a list of contacts objects now in the view there's nothing fancy there it just goes through a loop and it will display the name and email addresses in the table the contact info controller also has another feature 
uh, which is to create a contact, it will first display the view, so people have a place to put the information in. It will then receive a POST request. Contact Info Controller also have another function to create a contact. First of all, it will display a view for person to put in the contact information, which is a form, simple form that has a name and email address. And in the POST request, uh, we'll grab the name and email address user put in, refresh the token, and populate a contact object putting the name and email address to that object and shove it into the context object and we'll use a create contact async to create that contact. You can also create more than one context by putting more objects in this list and it will pass it back to the context info index controller which will get these contacts again and that will include the new contacts that use it just created. Going back to the create eight contacts info view we can see uh, we can see here it has a simple form that just takes the name and also email address all right so that's basically what it is there is also a helper here that i would like to explain uh, the token utilities is a public static class that has a couple of helper method for us to interface with the file so the store token will actually create a file and store the token in zero token.json the get stored token will deserialize the JSON object and uh, and return the zero token object uh, the token exists function will check whether this file exists and that ultimately determines the home page view logic now let's go for a test drive you can use terminal commands to run this application so .NET build and .NET run but today we're not going to do that. I do like that OmniSharp debugger, so I'll just simply press F5. Now, because this is the first time I run this uh, sample app, it will ask me which environment I would like to run it in. I'd like to run it in .NET Core 1. Immediately, it will create a launch.json file, which is a launch configuration, and it's, um, it has a build task. Now, in the tasks, if it builds, it will use the command .NET. It'll, you use the command uh, .NET and build and it will build everything for me. It's uh, basically the same as terminal except this one has got the integration with OmniSharp extension and it will have really nice debugger features. So let me press F5 again and it will build. A bunch of stuff will happen on the terminal and eventually it should open up a browser for me. Now it's been built we can see that um, because I don't have that JSON file so in the root of my project, I don't have that JSON file. And once I click on connect to zero, log in as myself, and walk through the authorization screen, select a uh, test organization, I've, I've used this one, and the authorization screen will display the scope that this application is trying to access. Uh, and the fact that I'm giving my user information to this application. I'll click on allow access. This will call back to my application and it will create, my controller should create that zero token.json. Look at that, it has already created. And we can see that token information is, is over here. It's got the tenant ID, it's got all of the refresh token, including expiry time. So that's all working fine. And it redirected me to the organization information I can get organization information again, get contacts. I can also create a contact. Let's test it out. Once I click on submit, it redirected me back to the list of contacts and the latest contact has been created. Here you go. This is how the sample app works. It has a simple feature to get organization information and contact details. It also has a feature to create contact. In my next video, I would like to build on top of this sample app and show you how an invoice controller can be built.